so the topic today is allergic rhinitis so we'll just put a recap on two allergic rhinitis uh, in a broader perspective and then maybe we can have discussion because this is something this is a topic in which you can go in depth as much as you want and this is also a superficial topic which can be managed very easily so just defining rhinitis what exactly is rhinitis when we say uh, medically we say there should be two or more nasal symptoms like either a nasal congestion rhinorrhea sneezing itching of or impairment of smell for more than 1 hour a day so this is what we define rhinitis as now when we define rhinitis what are the different types we have infectious and we have non infectious infectious rhinitis is something we are not covering today that's the influenza flu and all these stuff so we will not be covering that the non infectious is basically categorized under allergic and non allergic now we need to understand a little bit what exactly is an allergic rhinitis and a non allergic allergic rhinitis is defined as an immunological nasal response primarily by ige now non allergic rhinitis is where there is an the cause of allergy is not identifiable that we label as non allergic so it's basically an exclusion it's not an inclusion so whatever we are able to define for comes under allergic whatever we are not able to define comes under identif comes under non allergic uh, this this definition or this classification is disputable but at the end of the day for medical practice definitions are just as much important just to know it because at the end of the day we have to treat a patient our basic agenda our basic goal is to give quality medical care so these definitions really don't matter much now nasal function we know or so sorry for the spelling mistake over here but the nasal function basically includes the temperature regulation olfaction humidification filtration and protection this is known to everyone now the nasal lining basically contains secretions of iga proteins and enzymes and the nasal cilia basically propels at a frequency of 10 to 15 beats per minute and the mucosa which is the mucus that is generated is moving at a rate of 2 to 2.5 to 7.5 ml per minute now what exactly is allergic rhinitis how we define this is basically inflammation of the nasal mucosa caused by an allergen so there is a substance there is a outside substance which actually comes inside the nasal mucosa or is the nasal mucosa is exposed and it's basically a reaction responsive reaction to it which is basically an inflammation of the nasal mucosa so the nasal mucosa is not able to throw it away and it acts as a disturbing factor or an atopic factor and which causes the inflammation more secretion so most common atopic allergic reaction it's basically affects 10 to 25% of the population and that's why we need to understand why is it important to discuss about this and in the ent clinic 50% of the rhinitis patients are nothing but allergic rhinitis generally we see that allergic rhinitis if someone is having allergic rhinitis they generally start to have this at the young age it is very rare not very rare but yes rare to find someone who's never had rhinitis allergic rhinitis and suddenly in the mid age group coming up that he's starting to have symptoms of allergic rhinitis that generally does not happen if someone in the age group is having allergic rhinitis he or she might have had that since the childhood now what is the etiology what are the causes of allergic rhinitis basically we divide that into precipitating factors and the predisposing factors the precipitating factors as i said are the allergens that are present in the environment there is a popular statement that uh, some people ask what causes an allergy so i generally say that anything within the earth located up to the sky anything can cause allergy so allergy so there's so there's a common notion to get the allergy test done and everything i generally discourage that uh, to get done because the point is it's very expensive and allergy can be caused by anything anything it's just basically someone has to identify their allergen factors then house dust dust mites feathers to make tobacco smoke so smoke people like passive smokers have problem of this allergic rhinitis a lot industrial chemicals then we have uh, the animal dung and everything the nasal physiology basically disturbances on the normal nasal cycle so these are the precipitating factors now 
predisposing factors what are those these are basically genetic predisposing factors then there's basically during the puberty age group pregnant states and menopausal states so women are more likely to have allergic rhinitis than men and this is basically related to endocrine 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 factors then there's obviously psychology focal sensitivity states infections fungal infections physical so basically degree of pollution temperature ranges age and iga deficiency and everything so uh, someone might wonder that fungal infection i mentioned over here basically what happens is fungal infection is not the direct cause it is an indirect cause so if a person who's having fungal infection is prone to have more allergic response uh, to a allergen so these are predisposing factors now like oh, i said what are the allergens anything within the earth up to the sky can cause allergy pollens pollen spring tree pollens in summer we have grass pollens autumn weed pollens molds penicillium insects cockroaches house flies animal furs cats dogs horse monkeys rats rabbits any animal fur dust mites dermatophytes ingestions nuts fish egg milk you can add to that list means this list can never be complete because allergy can be caused by anything and everything and yes feel free to add to that list in the comment box chat box also so there will be an intuitive uh, session of discussion now when we talk about pathophysiology of allergic rhinitis it's basically immunoglobulin e mediated type 1 hypersensitivity reaction to an antigen in a genetically predisposed person so what happens over here is basically it's a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction which is caused by an allergen and this type 1 hypersensitivity is being predisposed genetically in most scenarios and what it eventually does is there's vasodilation and increased capillary permeability what does thus what this would do is it was it would increase the secretion of the mucosa 